Today, we are talking about how far back you can go with your autosomal DNA. These are places like Ancestry, MyHeritage, uh, Family Tree DNA, and 23andMe. We're going to jump into all of that here in just a moment. But first, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. So we're going to jump into that here in just a second. We're going to start the opener and, and get to it. Okay, so how far back can you go with your family history uh, tree using DNA? Now, we're going to kind of rough through some quick basics again. If you have not, if you're not familiar with DNA, we're going to quickly move on. Just keep in mind that if this is your mother, you know, she has 100% of her own DNA. With autosomal DNA, you inherit half, as do you inherit half from your father, right? But when we start thinking about moving back in the tree, you carry about 25% of the DNA from your grandparents, right? And so on. So now when we get back to the great grandparent level, you are inheriting about an eighth of their DNA, which is a good amount. We can certainly use that for taking the cousin matches from our great grandparents. This is the ideal scenario. These are second cousins that are in your DNA match list that probably share one of these great grandparent couples with you. So second cousins are fantastic for doing uh, DNA research using your family tree. Now let's go back another generation, right? So now we are at our two times great grandparent and you have about 1 16th. You have 16 two times great grandparents. So you have, you have inherited about roughly 1 16th of their DNA. So if we start looking at it in the fan tree, for example, look at how many grandparents you have when we get back to the four times great grandparent level. These are your great, 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 great grandparents, 64 of them. Now, if you find a DNA cousin that has one of these couples in common, that is great. Then you can start researching their family tree and so on. And with that, you can keep digging further. So how far back can you go? Let's keep exploring this idea. Four times great grandparents when we get back that far, you're looking at about 1.5% DNA that you have inherited from each of those grandparents. If we go back, that's 64 grandparents. So you, you are inheriting about 1.5%, okay? Let's go back to our graph for a moment. So we expand our tree a little bit farther and we are now looking at maybe doing some research on our four times great grandparent and we have that 1.5% my suggestion is that you focus on everybody that is greater than 10 centimorgans. In fact, Ancestry is not going to give you DNA matches that are any farther back than I think it's eight centimorgans as they're cut off now. So as we're starting to get back there, they're saying that if you get less than 8% centimorgans in common with somebody, the false positives increase dramatically. I personally never go below about 40 centimorgans, maybe sometimes as low as 25 centimorgans. And that's because I have plenty of DNA cousins to work with. So I don't have to kind of dig that deep into the weeds. And quite frankly, when I'm getting back this far, I'm really focused on the traditional genealogy and the records there. Now I may use some of those DNA cousins to help me find clues that they might have some records that I haven't explored, especially if I'm researching a new branch that I haven't looked at at all, then I might be looking at their trees to take a look at what they've discovered. And of course, I'm going to verify that to make sure that they're on the right track. So when we're getting back this far, again, you're inheriting this one sliver of the pie. So if this pie represents, it really is representing you because of all the different little, you know, colorful rainbow that you have, you're inheriting one sliver that comes from this four times great grandparent. So when you're doing this, 
you're really looking for fifth cousins, right? These are in your DNA match list that are fifth cousins. And what you want to do there is you want to search for cousins that are in this range, right? From maybe zero to 117. And of course at Ancestry, it's only going to allow you to do eight to 117. That maybe has a surname that you're interested in. Maybe you back up a step and you're looking for the surnames associated with the couples earlier. Moving on, we've got those 64 great-grandparent couples and we are focused now one generation even farther back. Now we're looking at less than 1% or sixth cousins that you might find in your DNA match list that might descend from that one that one little tiny, right? That one little tiny ancestor. The average is about 18 centimorgans, but again, it's going to be, you know, very few centimorgans. And the other thing you need to keep in, tr in mind is this is assuming, let's assuming that everything is perfect. There are no extra marriages in there. There are no half siblings. There's you know that this is going to happen. When you find cousin matches that you suspect are six cousins, they may even be farther back because there's a half relationship or closer than that because there's a half uh, relationship because the you know one of your ancestors married twice and that cousin descends from one marriage and you descend from another marriage so it this is one of the reasons why we do traditional genealogy with our dna research okay i would recommend that you focus on 25 centimorgans or greater that's just me and so if you're trying to figure out how you, this is a quick and dirty way, right? How you can determine what ancestors you have in common with your, say, fourth cousin. So if you are finding a fourth cousin in your match list and you're going, how is it that we relate? I don't see any common ancestors in the list. How do we relate? Well, I say you count the G's. So this is my G rule. Count the G's. Great, great, great. Grandparent is a G. Okay, so you count the G's. So you're looking for third great grandparents in common with with any fourth cousin. So if you think you have a fourth cousin, it's going to be roughly. It's just kind of a kind of a quick way to figure out roughly where how far back they go. It's going to be roughly a third times great grandparent in common with any fourth cousins. Now, again, this could be challenging because it could be that those cousins, you know, again, are either once removed, twice removed, or something along those lines. So it's just a ballpark, gets you in the ballpark. But you got to figure out which of the 16 great, great, great grandparent couples that this fourth cousin descends from. All right, we're going to take a break, a 12 second break, and we'll be right back. Hey, we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment, but I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so moving on to uh, our chart again, if we expand it even farther, so before we were talking about fourth times great grandparents, you can see. <laughs> I did a few slivers down here to make the tree look even greater. I did not put them all the way around. But you can see how many grandparents you would have. As a matter of fact, you would have 256 six-time great-grandparents. We're definitely less than 1% DNA at that point. Okay, so are we starting to lose viability here? Probably. Okay, we're getting out there and this with six six times great grandparents, these would be seventh cousins in common. At this point, I seriously doubt you're going to find very many DNA cousins that are of quality. So let's say, for example, we're researching this guy that's in red. This is now a four times great grandparent. All right. So this is my great, 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 great grandfather, right? And so we might be wanting to research him. So we can do some quick deducing that it's going to be a fifth cousin that we're going to need to find that descends from this great, great, great grandfather, great, 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 great grandfather. And so, you know, it's fifth cousins that we would be looking at with an average of about 25 centimorgans. Well, let's take a look at something for a minute. It, what, what are the probabilities at 25 centimorgans? So this comes from dnapainter.com. This is their shared centimorgans tool. We have Blaine Bettinger to thank for this work and Johnny Pearl who put together the website. Long story short is, 
look at all the possible relationships. If we don't know how they are related, then those relationships, there's a ton of them here, right? Look at fifth cousins way down here and it's a 5% probability. So while that rule kind of works for say third to fourth cousins, second to third cousins, somewhere in there, when we start getting back to fifth, sixth, seventh cousins, the rule doesn't really hold up quite as well. So I'm just saying that you have a ton of possibilities. So if you're not used to reading this, this would be like fourth cousin once removed, a half third cousin twice removed. Up here at the top, the 20 uh, at 25 centimorgans, the 27% probability is they're a half third cousin, a third cousin once removed, a half second cousin twice removed. These are generational differences now. And so you're getting the idea that you know, it, it's really hard to determine. So my fourth times great grandfather that you saw on that chart is here on the chart and I am way down here at the bottom, okay? So <laughs> you can count the generations, right? So here's parents, grandparents, great grandparents, two times, three times, four times great grandparents. This is, this would be uh, that I would have about 1.5% DNA with this person. This particular great-grandfather uh, lived between 1766 and 1834, okay? All right, so again, uh, there he is on the tree chart, and I'm suggesting that, you know, four times greats is probably about as far as you can go reliably, but you could probably go farther depending on how fragmented the relationships are. So if there's half relationships and removed relationships and so on. So factoring about 25 years per generation, you could probably get between 100, uh, 150 years probably reliably, maybe 200 years, maybe a little farther. It just depends on where in the lifespan of that person that we're talking about is. If we're looking at my four times great grandfather, 200 years certainly falls. That would be 1822 or 1823. Sorry, we're in a new year now. Yeah, so a couple hundred years definitely falls within that time frame reliably, okay? So how far back can you go with your research? I'm suggesting 150 to 200 years. That kind of falls in line with a lot of the other uh, DNA experts that I have talked to. And so that kind of gets you back reliably into the fourth, four times great grandparents and maybe even into the six time great grandparents. Now I want to show you something. So let's talk about this again for a second. So if this is now representing this ancestor and you've inherited one tiny sliver of that pie, one sixty fourth of that DNA pie, look at how much represented in blue that you did not inherit. So keep this in mind. Think about it this way. If you have a cousin that you know should descend, you know, on the paper trail is descending. You've made the connection, right? You've got the common ancestor between this, you and this probably fifth cousin. And you're saying, how come they're not uh, showing up as a DNA map? Well, it could be that they inherited a different sliver. I mean, the odds are great that they inherited a different part. If they're straight up fifth cousins with you, then think about it. They have 63 other slices that they could have inherited from that four times great grandparent that you didn't inherit. So it's the odds are great that you've got thousands of descendants from this four times great grandparent that you don't have a DNA match with. It's actually very likely that you don't have a DNA match. So if you do find DNA matches, consider yourself lucky. You know, Ancestry alone has now, I don't know, 23 million DNA kits out there roughly. And so your odds are gonna be greater with them. 23andMe is the next group that has the most DNA kits. However, I find a lot more luck on Ancestry, okay? So this is one of the reasons why we need to use DNA in combination with traditional genealogy research. We need to verify with records every link in the process, okay? And so I hope that helps <laughs> give you some clarity about how far back you can go with your DNA. Now, there is a handout for this episode for the information access level channel members on the YouTube channel, the happy dance level folks at Patreon. The differences between those are that on YouTube, if you join on YouTube, I think it's $9.99 a month and you get all the handouts. Those are gonna be in the membership tabs. The happy dance level on Patreon is 
that's uh, patreon.com forward slash genealogy TV. Those get emailed to you as soon as the next one is released. Any past episodes, like if you're watching this one right now and you decide to join on Patreon, you'd have to go to the posts because it's already been uploaded and you can find all the handouts from past episodes there. Or you can just buy them individually over on genealogytv.org forward slash handouts. They are a somewhere in the range of five to ten sometimes fifteen dollars for the handout all of that helps support the channel so i do appreciate all of the members there those are the the places that you can find the handouts also know that i have done a ton of videos on dna these are just a few of them and so you can find more there i've even done a playlist this is the short playlist there are actually like 40 videos on DNA on the YouTube channel here at uh, Genealogy TV. And so if you want to check out the playlist, um, I will leave links for everything that we were talking about, how to get the handouts, some of the other episodes, some of these other DNA episodes, all of that will be in the description box below the video on the YouTube channel, as well as I got to give a, a props to Diane Southern. If you want to take a really deep dive into DNA, I highly recommend her courses. I have put my affiliate link here for you if that is something of interest to you. I have taken her skills workshop and her YDNA course. Excellent courses. They're multiple weeks long. I can tell you there's a lot of work involved, but you are going to get a deep dive into her uh methodology for doing uh, DNA research. I certainly teach a lot of the basics here on the YouTube channel. You got a lot you can watch there. But if you really want to get into it and get your fingers in that pie deep, go check out her courses. They really are fabulous. And I can't say enough good things about Diane Southern. She's done several episodes here with me on the YouTube channel. And with that, I am going to say goodbye. And we will see you in the next episode. And with that, hasta luego.